Welcome back, this is part 4 of What Happened to the Terminator series. Since Terminator 3 finished with such an open ending, I was really expecting them to immediately follow it up with a sequel. But then, to my surprise, it turned out that the next installment in the series wouldn't be a feature film at all, but would rather be a TV series titled Terminator The Sarah Connor Chronicles, which would ignore the events of Terminator 3 and instead branch off into a new timeline. I was surprised, but really excited as well. To find a way to bring back Sarah Connor who was so wrongfully written out of Terminator 3 and then base a series around her exploits sounded like a really good idea that would hopefully get the series back on track. The pilot episode starts off in the year 1999, two years after the events of Terminator 2. A 33 year old Sarah Connor and a 15 year old John are now living a seemingly normal life with Sarah engaged to a man named Charlie Dixon. So John is starting this new school and just out of nowhere this hot babe named Cameron just starts coming on to him something bad which never fucking happened to me in high school. During one of John's classes, the substitute teacher named Cromarty reveals himself to be a Terminator and tries to assassinate him, which, well, unfortunately, that happened to me all the time in high school. Cameron subdues Cromarty and saves John, revealing herself to be a Terminator that has been sent back in time from the year 2027 to protect him. Come with me if you want to live. Cameron explains to John and Sarah that Skynet still exists in some form and will initiate Judgment Day on April 19th, 2011, which was a couple of months ago if I'm not mistaken. Deciding they need to try to put an end to Skynet for the last time, Cameron takes them to a bank vault where she had hidden a time machine to take them forwards to the year 2007 because, well the producers couldn't be bothered making the show a period piece. And so, over the course of the series, Sarah, John and Cameron try to discover the originators of Skynet, meeting new allies and enemies along the way. A lot of Terminator fans have been really impressed with this series, so I know what I'm about to say is going to be controversial. In fact, I can see all your hate-filled comments and thumbs down coming now. But I did not Thank like you, Terminator Asshole. The Sarah Connor Chronicles. In fact, I thought it was pretty crap. I found the show to be uninspired and boring. But before you hit that dislike button, please just hear me out first. The first problem with the series is that the production values have really taken a hit. The special effects and production design are nowhere near the quality of the movies. All the Terminators are computer generated. There is not a single practical animatronic. And that wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't for the fact that the CGI Terminators look like they're taken out of a bad video game cutscene. The makeup effects aren't as bad, but sometimes the Terminator actors look as if they were fan cosplay, with this bad red eye flash effect that they keep insisting on using and the T-600 Terminators that look more like goddamn Michael Myers. Look, I know effects like this come with the territory because TV series have lower budgets and shorter shooting schedules than movies. But the problem is a Terminator show needs to have good effects in order to sell the audience on the show's inherently outrageous premise. My suspension of disbelief depends on whether these effects look convincing, and the show just doesn't deliver on that. But you know, I could forgive all the bad effects if the show were to offer suitable characterization in order to ground the series. But that brings me to my next gripe, because after watching all 31 episodes of the show, I could not find a single character that I actually liked liked enough in order to warrant my attention. The reasoning behind making this TV series ignore the events of Terminator 3 was so that the show could bring back Sarah Connor. That's fine. Hell, that's even a good idea. But the problem is, is that the show never really makes use of her. They've gone to all this effort to bring her back, which I appreciate, but the show doesn't take us further into Sarah's backstory or her emotional journey. Hell, she doesn't even get as much screen time as I'd like her to. After watching the entire series, I did not learn one thing about Sarah that I didn't already know, and her character just isn't interesting. A lot of viewers have complained that this version of John Connor is too weak and whiny. I usually hate it when people criticise characters for being weak. You know, not every fictional character in the universe has to be a muscle-bound, crew-cut, square-jawed Duke Nukem type. We are allowed to have flawed characters. But that said, John is a sniveling, whiny little bitch in this series. If the guy even put half as much effort into stopping Skynet as he did into complaining, the war would be over in 20 minutes. What happened to that strong, smart kid from Terminator 2? He's been replaced by this big crybaby whose bottom lip is hanging down so low he nearly trips over it. Stop complaining and get a haircut, you hippie! 
We've also got this new Terminator girl, Cameron. Cameron is, once again, a Terminator who has been reprogrammed by the Resistance and sent back in time to protect John. The only difference is this time, John probably wouldn't mind boning her, unlike Arnold, which would be weird. With Cameron, it seems like the writers can't decide whether she's supposed to have emotions or not. When she first appears in the pilot, she seems to act like a cheerful, happy, everyday girl. But then as soon as she reveals she's a Terminator, BAM! Suddenly she has no emotions whatsoever. And it just goes on like this for the entire series. One moment she seems to have a grasp of what's going on, the other she's dumber than a bag of rocks. It's never consistent. Plus she goes haywire every five fucking minutes, yet no one thinks they should just shut the bitch off. They still keep her around. And she's poorly written as well, which is obvious when the show tries to force some mystery out of her. All the time people ask her questions that she knows the answers to, yet she won't tell them because, well, just cause. What model are you? Are you new? You seem... different. I am. Uh, you didn't answer his question. We've also got quite a couple of other characters in the show as well. More resistance fighters from the future, such as Jesse, Riley, and Kyle Reese's brother Derek. As well as some modern day characters such as Sarah's ex-fiancé Charlie and his new wife Michelle. But I had a hard time connecting with any of them. And it's largely due to the fact that the characters in the show are just introduced and dropped within a moment's notice. Characters like John's high school friends, Morris and Sherry, as well as their pregnant neighbour, Casey Cotton. They show up for some episodes, but then just bugger off later on without explanation. And then characters are killed off every other episode, but nobody seems to care. People die and there is no emotional resonance whatsoever. The Terminators in the show don't fare much better either. None of them seem to be as threatening as they are in the movies. Every other episode will feature a new Terminator assassin sent back from the future, but they show no consistency in their strengths. Sometimes you need an anti-tank rifle to kill a Terminator, and other times you can do it with a shotgun. They can tear through a bank vault door, but get trapped inside a bunker when you shut the blast door. Sometimes the Terminator can be killed when it's stabbed through the chest, other times they can reassemble themselves after being blown to pieces as if they're the goddamn werewolf from the Monster Squad. We've also got two main recurring villains throughout the show. Firstly, we have a Terminator named Cromarty, who's hell-bent on tracking down and assassinating John Connor. His plan to track them down consists of telling this FBI agent named Ellison that he wants to kill them, and then just following him around, hoping he will lead them to them. What a plan. I mean, like, it's genius. It's just fucking foolproof. I can totally see that working out for him. Dickhead. The other Terminator is a liquid metal Terminator named Katherine Weaver. What can I say about her? Well, it's first revealed she's a Terminator in a scene when she goes to kill a man by disguising herself as the urinal he's doing a piss in. Exactly what was going on when the writers came up with this? But that brings me to my final complaint about the show. The writing. A lot of plot threads are introduced in the show, but end up going nowhere, as they seem to drop them as soon as they introduce them. Plot threads like, who made this graffiti on the high school walls? What did the machines do to Derek in the basement in the future? Why were there Terminator parts in the plane crash? What's the deal with this Sherry kid? What's going on with Danny Dyson? What the hell was that HK prototype? Who wrote that message on the wall and why did he make it so cryptic? And why would he write it in blood? Couldn't he find a pen? Did he run out of paper? None of this ever gets resolved. The show also has a lot of really absurd dream sequences. Far be it for me to rag on a show which has scenes that take place within characters' minds, because I'm a big fan of shows like Evangelion, Inception, Pink Floyd The Wall, Twin Peaks, Akira Kurosawa's Dreams, even a Razorhead. But this is just amateurish. What's usually so good about dream sequences is that they can be used as a subtle metaphor for the events going on in the series and the characters' emotional struggles. But this is about as subtle as a sledgehammer to the forehead. Sarah's afraid of the pending nuclear apocalypse, so she dreams about murdering the inventors of the hydrogen bomb, who then turn into Terminators and kill her. And this is combined with an overuse of cartoonish CGI as if to add to the cheese factor. I'm telling you, Inception, it ain't. 
and every other episode has somebody traveling back in time, be it another Terminator sent back to kill someone, or even members of the human resistance. One time a Terminator even gets sent as far back as the 1920s. Hell, there are even a couple of times in the show where people travel forwards in time. Look, I'm sorry if my understanding of time travel comes from watching movies like Back to the Future and Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, but there's a reason why in the first Terminator, they tried to establish that Kyle Reese and the Terminator were the only ones who traveled through time, and that for whatever reason, they could only do it once, just to this one time period. The reason for this is that once you establish that just about anyone can travel through time, willy-nilly, to whatever time period they want, whenever they want, it all of a sudden raises all kinds of questions about the show's plot. Questions like, why don't the machines send a Terminator back in time to immediately after one of their previous ones gets defeated? Or immediately before that for that matter? Or in that case, why don't the machines just send back more than one Terminator at once? Hell, why don't the machines just send an entire army back in time to conquer the Earth? For that matter, why don't the Resistance send an army of their own back to when Skynet first gets activated and shut it down? But hang on, if Skynet kills John in the past so that he won't become a resistance leader in the future, then he won't exist in the future so Skynet won't have a reason to send back Terminator to the past, so then John would exist in the future and a Terminator would be sent back in time. And yeah, this is just where my brain starts fizzling. But then again, I am looking for logic in a series about time traveling robots from the future. And really, for as much flack as I'm giving the show, it really does have some strong points. The show actually picks up a lot during the second season. The kid who plays John actually does a better job than I give him credit for. When he's not moping about, he actually does a good job of portraying a young man who's burdened with the responsibility of becoming mankind's saviour. Later on, he even gets a haircut. And the show does offer the occasional piece of interesting characterization, such as when Derek takes John to meet a younger incarnation of his father, which is a really interesting way to play with all these time paradoxes. The second season ends with a big twist that I actually didn't see coming. Well, this is actually getting kind of interesting. Let's see what they have in store for season three. Oh, son of a bitch. This is ridiculous. They couldn't cancel the show when it was crap, but they could once it started getting fucking interesting. But the worst crime committed by this show is just that it's really boring. 90% of the episodes were just filler. Most of the episodes didn't have any real sense of continuity between them. They wouldn't expand on the characters. They wouldn't go into the overall story arc. They just kinda waste time for 40 minutes until the episode was over. You can miss like 20 episodes in a row and still not have missed anything important. And so I did. When the show first aired, I watched the first episode, then the second, then maybe I tuned in about halfway through the third, flipping back and forth between it and whatever else was on, and after that maybe I watched about 4 or 5 episodes for the rest of the series. Because there was just nothing there to keep me invested. In fact, the only reason I even bought and watched the DVD series set was just for the sake of doing this review. And after this, I'm probably never going to watch it again. Alright, now you can hit the dislike button. Yeah, go on, I dare you. Oh yeah, that's right, you would, wouldn't you? Yeah, fuck you, mate. Well, tune in next week, we're looking at Terminator Salvation.